welcome to Sarah Sample Retreat. Today we're going to be making some shaker cards with some new products from Spellbinders. So we've got some from Chris Wiley collection and some from normal Spellbinders collection but they're all kind of like balloon based. So I'll just quickly take you through some of those products now and then we can get on and make some shaker cards. So first up we've got this Party Balloons Bouquet Glimmer Hot Foil Plate and Die Set and you can see there you've got the balloons you've got also got circle to cut out the inside of the balloons which we're going to do today if you want to make a shaker you've got the for you sentiment you've got a little leaf in case you want to make them into like oranges or peaches you've got like a little bauble topper in case you want to make them into baubles so they've made this so flexible and then you've also got like the little bow and the little kind of balloon string so that you can make it into gorgeous balloons I really like this because it's really, really flexible and they've really thought about the different ways that you could use that and added in all the accessories for it. And then you can also buy to coordinate with that the Balloon Bouquet Design Stencil. So with that you can stencil on some different like balloon tails and have different designs for the balloons. So I think that looks really cute. So then we've got the It's My Party Glimmer Sentiments hot foil plate and die set so each of the hot foil plates has a coordinating die to cut out the sentiments so we've got it's party time welcome baby pop clink fizz eat cake congrats and bride to be so a really nice kind of selection of sentiments there so then we've got the giant party balloon in my hot foil plate and die set so there you've got that huge balloon and the happy birthday sentiment and then the final things we're going to be using today are the Party Balloon Garland Clear Stamp Set. So that's a really nice one for if you haven't got the hot foil machine. So I'll show you how to use that as well. So it's got like the balloon garland and then a whole heap of different sentiments to go with it. And then you can also get the coordinating stencil for that, which colours in the balloon garland, but also has lots of kind of stenciled sentiments as well. So that's really nice too. So let's get on to making the cards. And... Now I'm not going to do the hot foiling on screen today because I've done a foiling video quite recently um, which I'll link right below and also if you've never seen hot foiling before I'll link a kind of intro to hot foiling video below as well in case you want to look into that but for today I've done all the hot foiling in advance so all the foiling that I've done today is in gold you can see here I've got the balloons I've got one of the balloon tails and I've got that it's party time. I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but the it's party time's a really, really lovely font. It's got like little dots within the font that make it look kind of cool, a bit disco-ish. I'm gonna start off with these. And I'm gonna bring in my stencils. Now this one we're gonna create into a shaker. So it's only these two that I want to stencil. I think I quite like this stripey one. So I'm gonna use that stripey one. But I obviously don't want to stencil in this bit. So what I'm gonna do is, you see here where there's this part of the stencil I've got these two pieces that came out of that so I'm going to put one of those there and then that will stop the stenciling going into this circle so I think what I might actually do is use this part of the stencil to create kind of a pink base for my balloon and I'm using these kind of more detailed they're not the finest brushes but they're obviously not the big stenciling brushes these are from Altino because I think where the um, stencils are quite close to each other like this and you're only stenciling a small area they're much easier to use then I'm just going to go in and fill in that bit where the middle piece went over and then I'm going to put this one over the top so that was salt water taffy that I just used for the pink and then I'm going to use the shaded lilac distress oxide ink over the top. And we've got that cool stripey balloon and that'll come off and this one will still be clean. And then I'm going to put this on like this and then I'm going to put this one over here like this so that I can do this black one. So for this one I'm going to use the Salvage Patina ink. So I can take these off and then I'm going to cut all these pieces out with the coordinating dies. So I've got this die for this. Then I'm also going to use 
this die to cut out the centre of this final circle and then I'll cut this one out of here and then once I'm done with that I can cut out this final one as well. So then there are my balloons cut out and I want to glue them onto some acetate. It's only really this piece that needs to be covered in acetate so I'll go towards the side. So you could use double sided tape to do that. Or I've got some sticky dots that I'm going to use. So these ones are Midas Touch ones. I'm not sure if that brand's still around, but you could buy another brand. Or if you don't have any, then you could just use tape. But you can see that that's put sticky dots on the back of there. And then I can save that to use on something else. So then I'm just going to put that towards this corner of here. And that'll adhere nicely around there then. Then I'm going to trim this around here and then I've got some foam strips and I want to double these up because they're quite slim foam strips and I want to put like gems on in, in, instead of like sequins or something so I want them to be a bit deeper. So then I want these all around this circle. So then I'm going to butt this right up against here and I'm going to follow it around and then I'm going to just chop that off so that I've got a nice sealed circle around there so that means that nothing will stick out now and then I'm going to put this bit here. So then the other thing I want to do is you can see when this cuts out it cuts little slots into here so this can go into the slot and then you don't have the white bit at the top of the st string. So I'm going to pop those into here. And then I'm going to pop a bit of extra sticky onto the back of those as well. So then I've got this Crystal Collection Sweet Pea selection from Lucy's Cards. And I'm going to put more of these in than I would a usual shaker because I do want you to be able to see them well. And I'm just going to take some time to turn them all over as well because I don't want you to see like all the backs of them. And I chose this selection because I think the colours go quite nicely with the colours that I've used for stenciling. So I've actually changed my mind and I've decided to go for this pale pink card blank instead of the white. I think the white looks a bit stark for the look that I want for it. I really like this colour, it's called Barely Brush and it's from um, Paperbox Limited. But it's such a pale pink, it kind of doesn't intrude on the card at all, but it just adds that extra bit of colour. So I'm just making sure that my shaker bits are in the right position before I glue this down. So let's add that onto our card. And I can add this in the right place. And then I want to glue this behind, but obviously because I've put the shaker pieces behind, I can't really just like slide that under like I would normally. So I'm going to cut the top off this one. So then I'm going to glue this behind them. So then I want this it's party time to go here. So I kind of want to go it to go across that balloon string. So I'm just going to put some of this doubled up strip either side of the it's party time. So that can stick on there like that. So I'm just going to add three of these extra beads from the same pack, just around the edge of my balloons. And there's that card done. Then for the second card, I'm going to use the stamp set and do some heat embossing. So I've got a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of Nina Solar White cardstock and I'm just going to cover that with my embossing buddy and then I'm going to use my stamp wheel for this. So if you've not seen the stamp wheel before it's a stamp positioning tool and I've also got these alignment guides for it so I'm going to use this one here which is for a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card blank so I'm going to pop that in the corner and then I can line this up here and then I can take this off because I don't want that to get stamped. And the sticky mat will hold my cardstock in place, although now that I've just put my 
pens all over it. I should probably just go over it again with this. So then I'm going to line this up where I want it on my piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to pick it up with the top of the stamp wheel. And then I want to heat emboss it, so I'm going to use my first mark ink to go over it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink it up again. You'll see I've got this marker here that I had facing down before, so I'm going to face that up this time because I want it to create a whole garland. So this is a really nice stamp because you could create this in two pieces. You could create it like this is a garland. You could just have it going down one side of your card and having something else the other side. And you don't need the stamp wheel for it, it's just really handy. So you could just put it on your block and turn the block around and line it up. But especially because I'm heat embossing so it's hard to see where I've stamped before. Then since I have the stamp wheel it is really useful. So then I'm just going to heat emboss that in gold. So let's just cover that in gold embossing powder. So I'm just going to go and melt that. So then I can use my coordinating stencil to add colour to this. So I'm going to use the same colours as I used for the, the last card. So I'll start with the salvage patina. I'm actually going to move this onto stamp wheel because it's got that sticky base so it'll hold my card stock in place but also hold my stencil in place and that way I can get ink without having to worry about the stencil moving. Then I can move it around to do the other side. So I can move on to the next one. And there's no particular order that these need to go in because the, the images are kind of next to each other as opposed to layering. So it doesn't make matter which one to use first. I'm going to go with that salt water taffy next. So I'm going to use the shaded liner. Okay, so unfortunately my phone died as I was filming and I'm not going to get a chance to refilm it so I'm going to talk you through the rest of how I created this card. So I've done the stenciling, so I've just cut round the two sides of that garland and I've kind of overlapped them slightly on here. Then I stuck them to some acetate and just like I did with the other card I ran some foam strips round under there put my shaker elements in and stuck it onto the card so that one's straight onto the card and then I've put this welcome baby sentiment from that sentiment set that I showed you on the front and then I'd started the next card and all I've done with this one is just blend some of that same saltwater taffy shaded lilac and salvage patina ink onto there and because they're such different colours they're not going to blend exactly but you've got this nice kind of like colourful almost kind of partial rainbow effect. So then I've hot foiled this balloon onto my white cardstock. Again we're using the gold foil and I've put these dies one on the outside and one in, on the inside of that and then I've just got this little die that I can also die cut this piece with. So I'm going to run those through my die cutting machine. So I've got these like this and I'm actually going to put this piece of tape across those two dies because I want to lift these two dies, the two circle ones, without moving them apart. I want them that exact width still. Because what I'm then going to do is I'm also, let's just remove this, I'm also going to cut that from some double sided foam sheet. So I want it to be the exact same width so that it can fit under there. So then I've cut another circle. And I've cut this one from acetate and I've foiled the happy birthday sentiment that comes with this set onto the happy birthday. So then I'm going to attach that behind here. So I'm going to use glue dots again for that. And then I'm going to make sure that that's through that little slot. I really think that that little slot is such a good addition. So that this looks like it's coming out of the balloon rather than being stuck on top of it. And then I might actually just turn that over, I think that might be easier. So then we've got this cute balloon and we can stick 
a foam circle on the back of it. And then I'm just going to cut a little slither of this to go on the, if when you hold the balloon. So I'm not putting so many shaker pieces in this one, because when you hold it up I want it, them to fall below the happy birthday, so that you can read it nicely. So I can just stick that on. So then we've got this lovely shaker, and then I'm just going to scatter some of the sparkles around the outside as well. So that's that third card finished. Then there are all three of today's shaker cards. So I hope you've enjoyed making them with me. If you have, I'd really appreciate you clicking like below. And you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press the bell button and select all, then YouTube will also notify you when I've got a new video available. All of the products that I've used for today's video are listed in the description below. There's also a link there to my blog where you can find a picture supply list if that helps you find what you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon.